Oh, this brand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, considering they just you just joined the team in the bubble, how much of an X factor has uh, Trey Burke been? He's been good, but we kind of just played well throughout the bubble. So uh, just gives him great speed. You know, uh, he's taking off the field. He's actually shooting the ball pretty well as well. He's always been an offensive player, and, and that's what he's doing. Next, we're going to go to Farbad. Hey, Doc, in, in the last seeding game you guys had, you did like a terrific job of neutralizing Boban when he was in the starting lineup. What kind of went wrong in game two where he was able to go off so efficiently? He just caught the ball deep into his spots, you know. He's capable of doing that. And then on the other end, I thought he was very effective uh, nice. defensively as well, uh, clogging the paint. I thought our spacing, actually in both games, have been pretty much poor uh, offensive spacing. And so I thought we really helped uh, Bobby be a great defender. Next, we're going to go to Om. Hey, Doc. Uh, the did Pat do anything today, and, and uh, is he available tomorrow? Is tomorrow like a game time decision type of thing with him? Yeah, it's probably game time. We haven't practiced yet, uh, but I don't anticipate him participating in practice. Next, we're going to go to Kyle on the bubble. Uh, to jump on Farbod's question there, um, what's it like as somebody who's Coach Bobby to kind of coach against him? I mean, he's so unusual. Is it you need to design stuff just for him? When it comes to no, I mean, you just got to know how to attack him um, on both ends, you know. Uh, but if you're going to let him catch it deep, then what are you going to do? Because you're not going to grow any much, you know, once he gets it. You're shorter than him. It's guaranteed. Uh, you know, what shoulder to take away. I thought Jermichael had one great one where he took his shoulder away. And then I thought the other three, we, we went to the wrong shoulder. So, again, uh, we made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. But Bobby is a matchup. You know, we use him the same way. Uh, when he goes well, you keep him in. When he, when he doesn't, you take him out because uh, it goes both ways with him. You know, it really does. And just as a follow-up, it seems like – Based on Dallas's reactions, he was a guy who really fired them up. Do you kind of remember that effect on your He's best? He's just a good level? guy. You know, whenever a, a guy, a team favorite plays well, uh, everybody gets excited for him. Uh, but I, you see that on every team. There's certain guys. Uh, Sham's one of those guys on our team. When he's making shots, playing well, you know, everybody enjoys it because they see how hard, like in our case with Sham, they see how hard he works, how young he is, how much he wants it. And, and when good things happen for him, it, it, it kind of lifts the entire team. Next, we're going to go to Saad. Hey, Doc. Uh, as, a, as a decorated coach yourself in the postseason, I'm curious, when you look at Rick Carlisle on the other side, what do you see from, from his coaching and, and how he approaches these postseason series? I mean, I don't know. I see Rick Carlisle. <laughs> you know, he's a good coach. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't know what the answer is there. I don't, you know, I look at more of the teams and what they're doing than the actual coach. You know, I hope he's not down there looking at me, you know, so, um, you know, but I love him. I love him as a coach. I love him as a guy. Um, but other than that, I see that their team, they're executing their butts off. And, and that's usually where Rick's teams do pretty well. In. We're going to take two more, one from Miriam. Hey, Doc. Um, question about sort of the neutral environment and, and the fact that, you know, because you guys don't have home court, that you didn't lose home court, but also maybe role players who might not play so well on the road don't have to deal with the road the same way. How do you feel like that's affecting play? I have no idea. It's a good question. I've, I've, I've heard it uh, bounce around a bunch. I do think it has some kind of impact. I just don't exactly know what it is, you know. Um, but there's definitely an effect, you know, um, with, with some players and some not. I'm just not – I don't think any of us are bright enough to know which ones it's affecting and which ones is helping. Uh, but you're seeing a lot of players play well, uh, and, and, and that's obvious. Uh, and, and, you know, if you had your home crowd there one day, I don't know the answer. Or when you're struggling a little bit, if your home crowd was behind you, would that help? Um, you know, I don't know the answers to that. I, I really don't. Uh, I thought coming in it was just going to be a competition, and it still is. Uh, but, but there are other factors. I just – I don't think any of us actually know what the factors are, what the impact on uh, our guys are. All right, last question, Nikki. 
Hey, Doc, in uh, Trez's second game back, what did you see from him, and where does he still need to get a little bit more comfortable in the flow of things? Just everywhere. I mean, he's, 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 um, his rhythm's not great. His condition is not great. It's just a tough place to uh, try to integrate a guy. And, you know, um, I don't know who said it, uh, but they're right. It's not that Trez has been off a month. It's, he hadn't played basketball in five months, when you think about it. I think we keep saying a month. Well, he never played. Uh, in any of these games. So he's been off five months uh, of real basketball. And, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one for us, I can tell you that. Uh, we need him, uh, but it's tough to throw him in in the competition. And I feel for him, I just, you know, life gets involved sometimes and, and you just got to make the best of it. All right, that's all I got for you. Thank you, Doc. All righty. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.